just like we learned how to find the angle between the lines in a two dimensional plane here also we have a method if you have uh, equation r1 and r2 of two lines so with the format of a1 lambda b1 and a2 lambda mu b2 or lambda b2 then the angle between the two lines is given by cos theta that is just by multiplying the vector we get this cos theta is equal to vector dot product of the two vectors divided by the modulus of the vectors product okay so this is vector format to find the angle between the two lines what we can do is we can go for a dot product of the given vector and the modulus of the vectors okay so this is one way to find the angle between the two lines so there is another way that is uh using this we can also understand the conditions for perpendicularity and uh, uh parallelism what do you mean the parallelism and perpendicularity in the two lines are parallel they are called parallel lines and there is a condition for that that condition is called parallelism condition for that what we should have is b1 should be some constant into b2 okay that is the vector b1 if you take a common uh, scalar from that it should look like the same equation that is for parallel lines for a perpendicular lines if you take a dot product of the b1 and b2 it should be a scalar equal to 0 so if you take a product of the two vectors dot product of the two vectors if that is becoming 0 that means the lines are perpendicular simple okay and in case of a uh, what is it for parallel lines the one of the vector should be written as a scalar multiplication with the other vector then it becomes the, these two lines are parallel to each other okay so let's see if there is an example to understand this better okay. to first understand the cartesian format as well to understand the angle between the two lines just like we saw uh, vector form we can also check cartesian format to get the angle between the two lines so in the cartesian form we know uh if there is a equation of a line one of the equation can be written as x minus x1 by a1 x y1 equal to y minus y1 by b1 z minus z1 by c1 right similarly another vector can be represented like this so direction ratios of the lines are proportional then they becomes parallel that is if m1 of this line is parallel to this so now what it says is cos theta vector m1 is here parallel to a1i plus b1j and c1k vector m2 is this so if they are parallel so what we what happens is cos theta is written as their dot product when we are having a cos theta we are having a dot product okay so modulus of m1 and m2 if they are parallel what happens this should be equal to watch so this enter thing should be given and we can find the value of theta by taking cos inverse of this enter expression and how to find the dot product dot product is very simple so we know the modulus i mean the what is it magnitude of the vector the denominator is simply a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square into a2 square Plus b2 square plus c2 square, whereas the dot product will lead us a1 a2 direct product b1 b2. Extra this vector concept. Can you recall? So when you do the dot product of the vectors, this vector and this vector, we will only multiply the same perpendicular vectors because cos uh, a1 will be multiplied with a2. And B1 will be multiplied by B2, and C1 will be multiplied with C2 because cos zero is one, so we will only have this much, right? That is the value. We can even use sine, whereas we have to use cos uh, cross product for that. But this is a better way to find the angle between the lines. Okay, so you can convert this into sine theta as well later if it is needed. For time being, let's use this method only to find the angle between the lines. Okay, now coming to condition for perpendicularity and parallelism in case of uh, uh, Cartesian form is if 
the lines are parallel, the numerator will be zero, right? As the numerator is zero, we can say a1, b1, a1, a2 plus b1, b2 plus c1, c2 equal to zero. If they're perpendicular, denominator will be zero or this ratio a1 by a2 will be equal to b1 by b2 will be equal to c1 by c2. Okay. So just remember in the Cartesian format, if you want to know the lines are perpendicular, this condition has to be applied. Other the numerator has to become zero because we know cos 90 is equal to zero. Okay. The numerator of the expression is zero means the entire value will become zero. Then theta will become 90 degree. So if it is uh, per parallelism, then we have to know that the ratio of the a1 by a2 should be equal to a2 by uh, sorry b1 by b2 which is also equal to c1 by c2 so let's go to the examples quickly so this will help us understand the application of these conditions uh, there is a question here find the angle between the lines so that line is one line is 2i minus 5j plus k plus lambda times 3i plus 2j plus 6k another line is 7i minus 6k there is no j that means it is on the uh, y-axis itself plus mu i 2j plus 2k okay how to solve this so here a1 and b1 we can understand clearly right what is b1 here b1 of the first equation is 3i correct plus 2j plus 6k what is the second equation line i plus 2j plus 2k right so how do you solve this is uh, I can say a1, a2, b1, b2, c1, c2. Okay, so what is a1? a1 is 3, this is 1, b1 is 2, this is, what is the value of this? Hmm. So we have 2 again and C1. What do we have here is 6 and we have is 2. Okay. So our problem will become A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 square root of, we know that A1 square plus uh, B1 square plus C1 square into the same formula we're going to use A2 square plus B2 square plus C2 square. So when we do that, we get cos theta equal to what? So 3 plus exactly 4 plus 12 square root of what we have is uh, 3 square is 9, 9 plus 4, 13, 13 plus 36, which is 49 and it becomes 7. Similarly, the next one becomes uh, 1 plus 4 plus 4, 9, it will become 3. So what is our cos theta now? Finally, cos theta is simply 3 plus 4, 7, 7 plus 12, 19, the denominator becomes 21. So our theta is acute angle. So we will write 19 by 21. So that is the angle between the lines. Isn't it simple? So once you know what is a1, b1, c1, we can understand this. Okay. Yes. So we just have to focus on the constant part multiplied with the remaining vectors. Let's go to the next question, next concept. So with that, we can wind up this. Distance between the two skew lines. What I mean by skew lines? Skew lines are neither intersecting nor parallel, but they have some uh, distance between the two lines, right? So this is an example for a skew line. Two straight lines in a space which are neither parallel 
nor intersecting Galois Q lines. In case of a two dimension, we say if the lines are not parallel, they must be intersecting somewhere. But in case of a three dimension, there is no condition like that because if they are not parallel, it doesn't mean that they have to be intersecting. They may not intersect at all because there is a third dimension. So in that case, what we do is we we'll try to find out the shortest distance between the lines, whether they are parallel or non-parallel. We can still find the shortest distance between them. How to find the shortest distance is by drawing a line perpendicular to both the line segments. Distance what we get for that particular line segment is called shortest distance. Okay, so the line of the shortest distance, if if L1 and L2 are the two skew lines, then the straight line which is perpendicular to each of these two non-intersecting lines is called line of the shortest distance. That's what is mentioned again. Okay, so this is the formula to find the shortest distance between the two lines. That's a Cartesian form. In the Cartesian form, what is it? If you have two lines, x minus x1 by a1 and y minus y1 by b1 and z minus z1 by c1, which is equation of one line. Similarly, we have another equation with the, uh, uh, what is it? Subscript 2, that's another equation. Then how to find the shortest distances is the formula. So there's a determinant of x2 minus x1. Remember this formula, which is very helpful for us. z2 minus z1 and a1, a2, this is a2, b1, b2, c1, c2. Okay, so how this formula came, all the explanation is there in our uh, expression. So how this has been converted into what? Determine it. You have to check the uh, actual solution, actual uh, conversion or uh, derivation if you need. If you know, if you don't need it, you can just directly use this formula. Okay, so this enter uh, this particular determinant will decide the distance numerator of the distance part okay and this will become zero if they are what if they are intersecting if they are intersecting what happens the shortest distance become zero that's why the denominator numerator part will become zero okay yes so how that particular information came is here particular formula k if you can understand that way fine or else you can use this the shortest distance pq is b1 cross b2 into a2 minus a1 divided by modulus or magnitude of b1 cross b2 so this entire information is given like that okay yes this is the formula to find the shortest distance between them so Let's check the example, a solid example to understand the same. So I'll just show you the solution directly. So find the shortest distance between the lines. So here we'll just uh, first figure out what is A1, what is A2, B1, B2, C1, C2 quickly first. So what is A1? 1. Uh, B1 minus 1. C1 plus 1. And here A1 is 2. B1 is 1. B2 is 1. And C2 is 2. Okay. So what is X1? X2. Y1. Y2. Z1. Z2. So X1 is 1. X2 is 2. Y1 is 2 y2 is minus 1, uh, y, z1 is 1, this is minus 1. Can you observe that? Yes, all that observation we are going to substitute in our question. So what is happening to our solution is <clears throat> so we they have used the formula directly. The formula here is by using uh, the shortest distance formula a2 minus a1 into b1 plus b2 by that so yes you can just zoom it so they have found the solution like this 
by taking b1 cross b2 so can you recall how to take b1 cross b2 hmm? 1 that is a1 1 minus 1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 so when you solve this you get this product in the numerator which is minus 3i plus 0j plus 3k okay let me reduce this further and then that magnitude of that will become 3 root 2 so a2 minus a1 is the subtraction part so when you subtract this we get uh, i minus 3j minus 2k so when you solve all this we get the distance minus 9 so this is one shortcut we can use okay to first understand the cartesian format as well to understand the angle between the two lines just like we saw a uh, vector form we can also check cartesian format to get the angle between the two lines so in the cartesian form we know uh, if there is a equation of a line one of the equation can be written as x minus x1 by a1 x y1 equal to y minus y1 by b1 z minus z1 by c1 right similarly another vector can be represented like this so direction ratios of the lines are proportional then they becomes parallel that is if m1 of this line is parallel to this so now what it says is cos theta vector m1 is here parallel to a1i plus b1j and c1k vector m2 is this so if they are parallel so what we what happens is cos theta is written as the dot product when we are having a cos theta we are having a dot product okay so modulus of m1 and m2 if they are parallel what happens this should be equal to watch so this entire thing should be given and we can find the value of theta by taking cos inverse of this entire expression and how to find the dot product dot product is very simple so we know the modulus i mean the what is it magnitude of the vector the denominator is simply a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square into a2 square plus b2 square plus c2 square whereas the dot product will lead us a1 a2 direct product b1 b2 x that is vector concept can you recall so when you do the dot product of the vectors this vector and this vector we will only multiply in the same perpendicular vectors because cos uh, a1 will be multiplied with a2 and b1 will be multiplied with b2 and c1 will be multiplied with c2 because cos 0 is 1 so we will only have this much right that is the value we can even use sin whereas we have to use cos uh, cross product for that but this is a better way to find the angle between the lines okay so you can convert this into sin theta as well later if it is needed for time being let's use this method only to find the angle between the lines okay now coming to condition for perpendicularity and parallelism in case of uh, uh, cartesian form is if the lines are parallel the numerator will be zero right as the numerator is zero we can say a1 b a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 equal to zero if they are perpendicular denominator will be zero or this ratio a1 by a2 will be equal to b1 by b2 will be equal to c1 by c2 okay so just remember in the cartesian format if you want to know the lines are perpendicular this condition has to be applied other the numerator has to become zero because we know cos 90 is equal to zero okay the numerator of the expression is zero means the entire value will become zero then theta will become 90 degree so if it is uh, per parallelism then we have to know that the ratio of the a1 by a2 should be equal to a2 by uh, sorry b1 by b2 which is also equal to c1 by c2 so let's go to the examples quickly so this will help us understand the application of these conditions 
there is a question here find the angle between the lines so that line is one line is 2i minus 5j plus k plus lambda times 3i plus 2j plus 6k another line is 7i minus 6k there is no j that means it is on the uh, y axis itself plus mu i 2j plus 2k okay how to solve this so here a1 and b1 we can understand clearly right yes what is b1 here b1 of the first equation is 3i correct plus 2j plus 6k what is the second equation line i plus 2j plus 2k right so how do you solve this is uh, i can say a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 okay so what is a1 a1 is 3 this is 1 b1 is 2 this is what is the value of this hmm so we have 2 again and c1 what do we have here is 6 and we have is 2 okay so our problem will become a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 square root of we know that a1 square plus uh, b1 square plus c1 square into the same formula we are going to use a2 square plus b2 square plus c2 square so when we do that we get cos theta equal to what so 3 Plus exactly four plus twelve square root of what we have is three uh, square is nine nine plus four thirteen thirteen plus thirty six which is forty nine and it becomes seven. Similarly, the next one becomes one uh, plus four plus four nine it will become three. So what is our cos theta now? Finally, cos theta is simply three plus four seven. Seven plus twelve, nineteen. The denominator becomes twenty-one. So our theta is acute angle. So we will write nineteen by twenty-one. So that is the angle between the lines. Isn't it simple? So once you know what is a one, b one, c one, we can understand this. Okay. Yes. So we just have to focus on the constant part multiplied with the remaining vectors. let's go to the next question next concept so with that we can wind up this distance between the two skew lines what i mean by skew lines skew lines are neither intersecting nor parallel but they have some uh, distance between the two lines right so this is an example for a skew line two straight lines in a space which are neither parallel nor intersecting are called skew lines in case of a two dimension we say if the lines are not parallel they must be intersecting somewhere but in case of a three dimension there is no condition like that because if they are not parallel it doesn't mean that they have to be intersecting they may not intersect at all because there is a third dimension so in that case what we do is we we'll try to find out the shortest distance between the lines whether they are parallel or non parallel we can still find the shortest distance between them how to find the shortest distance is by drawing a line perpendicular to both the line segments distance what we get for that particular line segment is called shortest distance okay so the line of the shortest distance if if l1 and l2 are the two skew lines then the straight line which is perpendicular to each of these two non intersecting lines is called line of the shortest distance that's what is mentioned again okay so this is the formula to find the shortest distance between the two lines that's a cartesian form in the cartesian form what is it if you have two lines x minus x1 by a1 and y minus y1 by b1 and z minus z1 by c1 which is equation of one line similarly we have another equation with the uh, uh, what is it 
subscript to that's another equation then how to find the shortest distances this is the formula so there's a determinant of x2 minus x1 remember this formula which is very helpful for us z2 minus z1 and a1 a2 this is a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 okay so how this formula came all the explanation is there in our uh, expression so how this has been converted it to what determine it you have to check the uh, actual solution actual uh, conversion or uh, derivation if you need if you know if you don't need it you can just directly use this formula okay so this enter uh, this particular determinant will decide the distance numerator of the distance part okay and this will become zero if they are what if they are intersecting if they are intersecting what happens the shortest distance become zero that's why the denominator numerator part will become zero okay yes so how that particular information came is here particular formula k if you can understand that way fine or else you can use this the shortest distance pq is b1 cross b2 into a2 minus a1 divided by modulus or magnitude of b1 cross b2 so this entire information is given like that okay yes this is the formula to find the shortest distance between them so let's check the example a solved example to understand the same so i'll just show you the solution directly so find the shortest distance between the lines so here we'll just uh, first figure out what is a1 what is a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 quickly first so what is a1 1 uh, b1 minus 1 c1 plus 1 and here a1 is 2 b1 is 1 b2 is 1 and c2 is 2 okay so what is x1 x2 y1 y2 z1 z2 so x1 is 1 x2 is 2 y1 is 2 Y two is minus one. Uh, y z one is one. This is minus one. Can you observe that? Yes. All that observation we are going to substitute in our question. So what is happening to our solution is <clears throat> so we they have used the formula directly. The formula here is by using uh, The shortest distance formula a2 minus a1 into b1 plus b2 by that. So yes, you can just zoom it. So they have found the solution like this by taking b1 plus b2. So can you recall how to take b1 cross b2? Hmm? One that is a1 one minus one b1 c1 a2 b2 c2. So when you solve this, you get this product in the numerator, which is minus three i plus zero j. Plus 3k. Okay, let me reduce this further, and then the magnitude of that will become 3 root 2. So a2 minus a1 is the subtraction part. So when you subtract this, we get uh, i minus 3j minus 2k. So when you solve all this, we get the distance minus 9. So this is one shortcut we can use. <clears throat>